Dark Emperor and Other Poems of the Night by Joyce Sidman Welcome to the night. To all of you who crawl and creep, who buzz and chirp and hoot and peep, who wake at dust and throw off sleep, welcome to the night. To you who made the forest sing, who dip and dodge on silent wing, who flutter, hoover, clasp and cling, welcome to the night. Come feel the cool and shadowed breeze, come smell your way among the trees, come touch rough bark and leathered leaves, welcome to the night. The night's a deep of dabble dark, the night's feast of sound and spark, the wind's a wild enchanted park, welcome to the night. As night falls, the nocturnal world wakes. Mice begin to stir, moths flutter into the starlight, and deer step out from hidden places to roam and forage. Having rested all day in a hollow tree, the raccoon lumbers down a dust to search for food. Curious, intelligent, and omnivorous, the raccoon has nibbled nimble front paws that are good for digging, climbing, and prying open almost anything. Its well-developed sense of touch, almost unparalleled in the mammal world, serves it well in the darkness. Making its unhurried way across the forest, the raccoon forages by feel, inside a log for insects, down a hole for eggs, even underwater for frogs or crayfish. Snail at Moonrise Each night, Snail unhooks himself from earth, climbs a slick trail of silver up, up the horizon of, the, of log, up stems of leaves to their dewy tips, seeking with his tiny sandpaper tongue morsels of green to mix in his dark, moist body and spin into whirls of light. Shell maker, moon maker, Gleaming silver bright, each night darkness into light. Night is cooler, wetter, and, in some ways, safer for many animals. Woodland snails, for example, have moist, slug-like bodies they are in constant danger of drying out. During the day, they hide in damp places, under logs and stones, but at night they emerge to search for food riding on a cushion of slime which protects them from sharp objects. They do not chew, but rather scrape plant material into their mouths with a tongue that is covered by rows of tiny teeth. Young snails add a layer to their shells each night. While they feed, their bodies produce a special material that hardens at the lip of the shell, extending and widening its perfectly spiral shape. Dark Emperor, perched, missile, almost invisible. You preen silent feathers, swivel your sleek satellite dish of head. What fills the cool moons of your mesmerizing eyes? What waves of sound funnel toward those waiting ears? What symphonies of squeaks and skitters, darts and rustles, Swell the vast, breathing darkness of your realm, O oh, dark emperor of hooked face and hungry eye. Turn that awful beak away from me. Disregard the tiny hiccup of my heart as I flee. Nocturnal animals have specially adapted senses for hunting, whereas raccoons use extra-sensitive paws to feel for prey, great horned owls have huge eyes and extraordinary hearing. Their wide, flat faces channel sound toward two large ear cavities on the sides of their head. They can also swivel their head more than halfway in either direction, although not all the way around. As night falls, the great horned owl moves from its deep woods roost to a high perch near the forest's edge, with eyes and ears a hundred times more sensitive than a human's. It scouts for anything from salamanders to mice to rabbits. Like other owls, 
Its feathers are soft-edged so it can fly silently and pounce without warning on unsuspecting prey. Oak After Dark As nighttime rustles at my knee, I stand in silent gravity and quietly continue chores of feeding leaves and sealing pores, while beetles whisper in my bark, while warbles roost in branches dark, I stretch my roots into the hill and slowly, slowly drink my fill. A thousand crickets scream my name, yet I remain the same, the same. I do not rest, I do not sleep, and all my promises I keep. To stand while all the seasons fly, to anchor earth, to touch the sky. Although they don't look it, trees, like most plants, are constantly busy. All day they change sunlight into food through a process called photosynthesis. They grow new branches and give off oxygen and moisture. Their leaves are nimbled, twigs broken, and bark attacked by insects and fungi. Nighttime, when food production slows down, it is time for recovery and repair. The roots of oaks and other trees take in extra water at night to make up for daytime losses and distribute it, along with food the leaves have made, through a complex system of veins. Trees also grow new roots at night and repair themselves by sealing off wound sites and strengthening newly formed leaves. Song of the Water Boatman and Other Pond Poems by Joyce Sidman Spring Splashdown Peck, peck, crackle, crackle, fluff, fluff, wiggle, wiggle, snooze, snooze, mommy calling, peep, peep, scramble, scramble, hop, hop, teeter, teeter, peek, peek, water sparkling, deep breath, Leaping, leaping, splash down, bobbing, bobbing, heads up, paddle, paddle, mom near, follow, follow. Wood duck. The mother wood duck's favorite place to nest is a tree cavity as high as 50 feet in the air. When her eggs hatch, she warms and dries the ducklings for a day or so. Then she flies down to the water and calls to them. They return her calls and move toward the nest hole. Although they cannot fly yet, they leap one by one from the nest without hesitation. Whether they land in the water or on the ground, they are almost always unharmed. The wood duck was once hunted nearly to extinction for its feathers. Strict hunting laws and the use of artificial nest sites have brought back the wood duck but it remains a shy bird that prefers undisturbed ponds and wetlands. Predaceous Diving Beetle Diving beetles are sometimes called water tigers because they are such fierce underwater hunters. Although they are only an inch and a half long, they eat almost anything that moves and will attack much larger creatures with their powerful chewing mouth parts. Expert swimmers, they kick through the water with large black back legs and can carry bubbles of air to breathe underwater. Smooth, hard wing cases streamline their bodies and also protect their delicate wings. They fly mostly at night to scout out new sources of food. Diving Beetle's Food Sharing Rules Any type of larva is mine as well as all tadpoles, minnows, and newts. Sticklebacks, catus flies, spiders, and small frogs of any kind, mine. Snails, eggs, and bugs, all mine. In short, if it moves, it is mine. If it's anywhere near me, it is mine. If I'm hungry, and I'm always hungry, it is mine, mine, mine. And if by chance I choose to crawl up yonder smartweed, bask for a bit, open my armored wings, and fly about my kingdom, within which everything is mine, do not forget what is mine. 
For if I return and you have taken it, you are mine. Winter Bees and Other Poems of the Cold by Joyce Sidman Dream of the Tundra Swan Dusk fell, and the cold came creeping, came prickling into our hearts, as we tucked beaks into feathers and settled for sleep, our wings knew. That night, we dreamed the journey, ice blue sky and the yodel of flight, the sun's pale wafer, the crisp drink of clouds. We dreamed ourselves so far aloft that the earth curved beneath us and nothing sang but a whistling V of light. When we woke, we were covered with snow. We rose in a billow of white. Why do some birds migrate as winter approaches? Because the best spots for raising chicks are not always the best places to spend the winter. True to their name, tundra swans breed in the treeless tundra of far northern Canada and Alaska. Summer in these Arctic regions, bathed in almost 24-hour sunlight, it's bountiful and lush. Swans feed and raise young on new shoots and aquatic plants, but when the weather turns cold, they move in huge flocks to staging areas along the river deltas or marshes where the water is still, a free, is still free of ice. Here they rest and eat until the time is right for the 2,000 mile journey to warmer coastal areas such as New Jersey, or California. During migration, tundra swans fly in V formations at up to 5,000 feet and, can, and keep track of one another with high warbling call. Snowflake wakes. Snowflake wakes, whirling, arms outstretched, lace sprouting from fingertips, leaps laughing in dizzy in a dizzy cloud, a pinwheel gathering glitter, drops into air, suddenly soft and full, a lattice of stars spinning silently, drifts down, touching and tickling, clinging and clumping, hugs earth, sighs and settles, sleeps, tucked in its own blanket. Snowflakes begin in clouds where tiny water droplets freeze into ice, if the air is cold enough and there is plenty of moisture, bits of crystal form, which are six-sided because of the shape of the molecules that make up water itself. As these crystals swirl in the cloud, more and more water vapor freezes onto their surface and they begin to grow. Gathering ice on Earth of, of their six points, every snow crystal is slightly different because each follows a random path through the air as it grows. When the crystals are heavy enough, they drop from the cloud and fall, colliding and clinging to other crystals to form the snowflake we see. Once snowflakes touch the, the ground, their delicate lace begins to break down and form a more solid layer of snow. <laughs>